How you doing, everyone? It's JJ. Um, <laughs> we've hit the halfway mark of 2011, and uh, right now I'm in the Dallas Fort Worth area, you know, specifically Midlothian, which is about, depending on traffic, about 30 minutes south of the Dallas proper. But uh, I don't know about 2011. This has been kind of one of those years that I kind of would rather want to see go by real fast, and then again, I kind of just don't want it to end. But uh, I don't record these videos very often, and just, I kind of have my own reasons for it. But uh, this year's had kind of a mixed bag. It had some good things in it, but we also had some bad times, and you know, I'm kind of you know, going through kind of a rough shot myself, you know, trying to decide what I want to do next. I'm thinking about going into. I've been thinking about going into the media, communication. I want some. I want a job that will allow me to travel all over the world <laughs> and still help me, you know, survive and pay off things I need to pay off. And other than that, you know, it's a good thing I don't drive a car, so I'm about cars or financing them or anything like that <laughs> but uh, a great thing happened this year of course you know as many of you know Dirk Nowitzki and uh, Jason Kidd finally got championship rings this year with the Mavericks I gotta tell you a little story I used to you know, I started watching the Mavericks my first game I started watching was kind of back in 88 my uncle Carl first got married. They were showing a Mavericks game on TV at the time. I think it was the conference finals against the Lakers that year. They were a good team that year. They had guys like Aguirre and uh, Rolando Blackman and Brad Davis. I think Brad Davis retired that year. No, he was still active. But uh, I first became a Mavericks fan in the 90s. And as many of you NBA sports fans are aware, the... Uh, the Dallas Mavericks were a horrifically bad franchise back then. I mean, they were a joke. They were a joke in all of sports. One of the worst teams, like any of the four major leagues here in the U.S., even worse than the Cincinnati Bengals, didn't make the playoffs that entire decade. And, and I kind of find it hard to believe it's been 11 years since Mark Cuban bought the franchise, and now. Now he's an NBA champion. He totally deserves it. You know, some might not like him. Some might not. Some may hate Mark Cuban. Some may just not like him. You know, for his, for his style, for for the way he handles his own business. But I think, you know, sports really needs an owner like Mark Cuban. He knows how to shake the establishment and uh, and tell other people says, hey. I'm a guy that likes to get things done, and I will do anything to make sure my team is winning. And and he did, and the rewards, you know, finally paid off, you know. And I got to admit, it was so bittersweet watching that game on TV and watching my team celebrate on Miami's home floor, just like the other team, just like the Heat did in '06. I mean when they celebrated an NBA championship on Dallas's floor in a game six, oddly enough. I like to call this sweet redemption. You know, I've been waiting five years for this and it's just been an incredible ride. <laughs> you know, for all of us for me as a sports fan you know, in the last several months, you know, watching Arlington host the Super Bowl in your last February. You had my Rangers, the baseball team in the World Series last year. Which is a ride in itself. TCU winning the Rose Bowl. <laughs> it's just, we've been spoiled. We've been spoiled here in Dallas Fort Worth, you know, as far as sports go, as big events go, and hopefully we'll continue to bring trophies home to the area and and for many years to come. Now, on a very uh, serious situation. Um, one of the places that I got to tell you the story, you know, it's, I love telling stories, although my humor is kind of a bit of a dry sense of humor. 
<laughs> but uh, I've always dreamed of visiting Japan, taking in its culture and uh, just studying the language, and uh, and just really just getting into their into their you know, peaceful way of life. But uh, the last several months have really not exactly been peaceful over there. They've been going through a really tough time, and you know, I've been going to college now since uh, 2003, and over the years, I've known quite a few people from Japan. Uh, in fact, uh, one of those uh, students was actually in one of my classes, I'm a world religions class with uh, Mr. Tatum. I do believe what his name was. Well, I had a student named Yuko. And uh, I have to be very honest with you. I mean, she was the total embodiment of what the Japanese culture expects of its of its denizen of, of the people over there. That's you know honesty and uh, also you know what's the word I'm trying to think here? Um, very loyal to her studies. I mean, she was very, one of the most studious people that I have personally ever met, and, uh, but she was also a really good friend. She used to work in the cafeteria. <laughs> She'd always see me grabbing a bowl of peaches or grabbing a sour apple, and uh, I'd always say hi. We'd talk a little bit, just hang around for a little bit if we have the time. But no, she was always really focused kind of like you know me when I want to focus on something you know when I and I tend to stay committed on one thing I don't like to quit you know I've had to deal with quitters those who bail out on me and but uh, I kind of want to close this out by sending a very special message to people in Japan and that is uh, you know you know, when great disaster strikes, it's kind of hard to put the pieces together and kind of work towards getting back to normal. And it might take years for everything to get back to normal, but, you know, especially, you know, to Hiroko, who does the uh, Hiroko channel on YouTube, as well as the many other people based in Japan. I just wanted to tell you, you know, kind of like my clothes as we get ready for the second half of 2011 is really simple. And that's, you're never alone. You'll never walk alone. I'm here for you. We're all here for you. We're here to cheer for you. We're here to root for you. We're here to give you a moral support. I am. Uh, I wish I'd be there to give hugs to everyone, just hugging someone, you know, just providing all the support that I can give. And uh, I just wanted to tell you right now that, <laughs> I just want to tell you that, you know, that we here in the DFW area in all of Texas, all the U.S. really do care about you and, uh, I hope that someday you'll have the peace and hope you have the strength to finally get back to a sense of normalcy. And uh, if there's anything I can say to end this right now, it's this. Always stick together. Don't ever drift away. Always stick together and treasure those memories that you share, good or bad. I'm John Gilman, a.k.a. Master1982. From Midlothian, good night.